Welcome to this edition of Siebler Treasures. I'm Barbara Wesley, your host. This edition of Siebel of Treasures features John Vidal, the president and CEO of Sacred Wind Communications. There are several things that he is doing and that Sacred Wind is doing, and there are going to be some changes in our community. Animal Care Center, they still need people to adopt those pets. And then Kim Simpson is our new uh, city treasurer. And she is really excited about the job that she is doing. And then Kay Pasa with Manny Voskis and its Grants Rocks. We're keeping that moving along because people are stopping and picking up those rocks at uh, on Santa Fe Avenue, transferring those all over our country. So stay tuned. Fast, reliable internet is here, and it's local. My name is Robert Windhorst. When my wife went back to school to become a teacher, our internet service was terrible. Sacred Wind came into our area and we signed up. It is great service. Hi, I'm Amanda Valdez and I am a teacher. Thinking of pursuing my master's degree, I knew that it couldn't have been possible before. Sacred Wind Internet made it possible to obtain my degree online. Connect 66 Internet. Fast, reliable, and local. Powered by Sacred Wind. Welcome to this segment of Cibola Treasures. In our studio today is someone that's not a stranger to us here in Grants and Cibola County. We want to welcome John Badal to Cibola Treasures. Thank you, Bob. And you've got some things afoot with your business, um, with Sacred Wind Communications. Mm -hmm. Let's start off with a little bit of history. When did you establish Sacred Wind? Uh, well, we began the company in December of 2006, operating uh, pr principally on, on Navajo lands here in New Mexico. Okay. And I have seen some of the towers you, that are the maps of the towers that mm -hmm. you have there. And so you basically cover almost all of Arizona, which is no, not northern Arizona for the Navajo. Well, it's actually uh, northern New Mexico. You know, we're, okay. we're not in Arizona yet. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we have uh, we've built 32 towers, some larger uh, towers and some uh, smaller, within our territory that goes all the way from the San Juan River south of uh, okay. Farmington, all the way uh, down to nearly um, Cuba, Cuba, New okay. Mexico. Okay. Okay. And then from the Arizona border, uh, just west of Gallup, uh, paralleling I-40 all the way down to. Uh, the Baca chapter and nearly right. uh, nearly grants, and then we pick up Tohajali uh, outside of Albuquerque as well. That's a, that's in our uh, regulated service territory. Okay. But we've expanded since then now to include Grants and Milan and now uh, Blue Water Village. Right. Well, you know we are a subscriber to Sacred Wind, and we have been so pleased with the service that we have received mm -hmm. because the company that we had claimed that they were giving us what 20 meg mm -hmm. it was two yes okay i mean yes. we and we can't operate be that way because we have to have upload yes and you've given us all the upload we need well, thank you barbara thank so you. i think it's 100 meg right now yeah we we can yes we, we can provide uh, quite a lot of capacity here in the grants milan area and we intend to do even more right Right. So what direction is Sacred Wind moving toward right at this point? 
Well, we started as a phone company, as a, as a regulated phone company, and, and soon got into broadband because that, that's where <coughs> we and, and every other telecom uh, company must go. Uh, we have uh, a lot of years uh, in, uh, in uh, trialing uh, different technologies uh, for uh, broadband rollout. Uh, for example, we have worked with fiber, we have worked with copper, uh, we're, uh, with uh, coaxial cable, with fixed wireless. We even looked at uh, small aperture satellite. And we've, uh, we've touched all of those technologies and, and uh, have uh, applied them to various parts of, of uh, our network. Uh, what we have found for the Grants Milan area is that uh, we found the most affordable and quickest way to, to, get, uh, to provide broadband to uh, the majority of, of uh, households here was to do a fixed wireless, but we, uh, we installed portable towers. We installed four portable towers here in the Grand Milan area surrounding Okay, the, the and where towns. are those located? Well, one is uh, high up uh, on the, uh, near the water tanks uh, on, what is that, the, on the, uh, the north side of the, the right. uh, of, of town. Uh, and our, our chief uh, uh, antenna or tower is right next to our building on, uh, on Santa Fe. Okay. And then we have two others, uh, one farther uh, east and farther west. And we've just, uh, uh, last year we installed another one just outside of uh, Blue Water Village. Okay. Now, weren't you going to put one in at San Rafael, in um, that area? We're still working on that, <coughs> but, but uh, 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 we've happened upon a different plan, uh, I think, that, that may jumpstart us to, to provide service more quickly to everybody in, in the area, including uh, San Rafael. Okay. And, and that's where we're uh, uh, working on a plan right now to migrate all of our fixed wireless customers, or, or nearly all of them, uh, to uh, uh, fiber to a, a coaxial cable uh, okay. network where we can, uh, we're, we're planning to do is, is to increase the speeds to each uh, person's home uh, uh, from five to ten times what they're getting today for the same price. Well, that would be wonderful, yes. wouldn't it? Yes. Because I have, um, we have people all over town that say, can we get sacred wind? What's, what do we need to do to get sacred wind? Mm -hmm at our residence and yes. e either they had to be in line of sight with Mount Taylor. You've got one at Mount Taylor. We, ha you? we have a tower up there, yes. <clears throat> and so they had to be in line of sight with that. Uh, so now that you have put in the, I would call them auxiliary towers. Yes, it's sort of an, an array. Right. Yes. So uh, now that you have all of these other facilities available, mm -hmm that's going to mean that more people will be able to utilize sacred wind. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yep. So what else is happening that you want to oh, share? Oh, so many, well, so many things. <coughs> uh, the, uh, we, we are going to be uh, in March, uh, uh, early March of this year, we're going to be rolling out television uh, okay. as part of our broadband package. Okay. And so the, the television service, I think, will, will be uh, more affordable than satellite uh, uh, TV. Okay. Uh, it'll have uh, uh, nearly the same channels and will be the only uh, company in the area that provide local channels also uh, sure. from uh, Albuquerque here in this right. region. Right. And, okay. and so we're re really excited about that and we can uh, start that immediately uh, you know, over our fixed wireless network and uh, our uh, uh, and our copper network uh, in, our, uh, in the region we serve. And as soon as uh, we convert from fixed wireless to coax, uh, coaxial cable, uh, we'll have the, the television services over coax as well. Wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that people have become aware that we have, we have a real need in our community. And yeah. the fact that you're stepping up to the, the plate to, to meet that need is really important. Well, thank you. Thank you. you know, we <coughs> believe in, in the growth in, uh, in the Milan uh, Grants area. Uh, we... Uh, uh, see uh, how uh, diligently the, the city leaders and, and community leaders are working to uh, increase economic development opportunities here. And I think broadband has to be foundational to any plan that uh, the city or the county comes up with. Well, you know, uh, our economic development um, director, Eileen Yarbrough, yes. has started a project with a company um, in the east 
I believe it's it could be Midwest, but nonetheless, these folks go through a training, and then they're able to work from home, provided yes. provided they yeah, have broadband, broadband. Exactly. right? Exactly. So wireless, they can't. The company will not allow them to utilize wireless for their employment. Mm -hmm. So these people are having to go to the university, and the university is having to provide them with office space up mm -hmm. there so that they can be contracted to work for these companies yes. and to be able to do that from home would really be yes. uh, advantageous. But they can work from a fixed wireless location because fixed wireless is a replacement for a landline. Okay. And so that, you know that that's that's quite possible. But I I, I was uh, up in the uh, in, in the work area uh, that Eileen has, has established for this remote program. Right. It's really exciting. I, I saw her go through some training, you know, with a couple of individuals there. And I think it's really exciting. You know, it for, really for is, community. because we have a number of single parents. Mm -hmm. They would be able to, and see right now, she's having to open the doors at 6 o'clock in the morning so that they can provide services to these companies that are in the upper Midwest, sure, sure. Um, in the East Coast, mm -hmm. and they need to be able to be there to do the work. Yes. And so doing this, if, they, if we can coordinate all of this together, sure. then more people will be employed at home, and it's... These are quality jobs. Sure, sure, and that's where the future is going. You know that, that uh, <coughs> where um, uh, broadband is reducing the distance uh, you know, here in, in in our world. You know, it's the uh, uh, back office work like like Eileen has in mind can be done from grants as easily as it can be done from India. That's right, right, and hopefully um, this project will not only impact the grants community, but she's looking at impacting other commu rural communities as well. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, so that's exciting. And the fact that you're offering broadband or fixed wireless, mm -hmm. that would allow folks to yeah. work from well, home. Well, exactly, and this this region is, is so beautiful. And we're hoping that uh, by beefing up the broadband capacity uh, and improving uh, the opportunities for, for kids in school and uh, the opportunities for, for working in the home, uh, more people would want to choose the Grants, Milan, San Rafael, you know, Blue Water uh, area uh, to live That's here, right. spend the rest of their lives here and, and conduct uh, work here. Well, one of the things, my son uh, is retired from the military and he has often said when he's made trips here, we're not attracting those military retirees. That's right. And many of them, he has seen them in his community come in and establish businesses, purchase homes, mm -hmm. develop a second career. Many of mm -hmm. these retire at 40 years of age. Sure, sure. He didn't, but mm -hmm. many of them mm -hmm. do. And so Grants is ideal. We have a great climate. Mm -hmm. We're 75 miles from um, the medical facilities mm -hmm. in Albuquerque. Yes. We have all of these things here, but we're not tapping into and, that market. And a good university here, too. That's yeah. right. We so, have a lot going for us. Yeah, we really, really do. So what else would you like to advise your customers of? Well, uh, we're going to go through <laughs> some advancements in, in technology. We're going to be expanding our, our network, and uh, I just... Uh, hope that uh, everyone will bear with us w while we're under construction here. You know that uh, I, th I think there are many good things to, uh, to come for the uh, the citizens of this region. Right. Well, we're excited. Well, thank you. You're and welcome. Too. And we've observed, you know, the progress that you've made in around the Yatahe area and mm -hmm. northern New Mexico, and um, having been in Window Rock and have seen the towers that they're hoping to yeah, utilize right. with your system exactly. that, um, you know, this is just what we've needed in these rural communities. Excellent. Thank you, Barbara. Well, you've seen, you've had a vision. Yeah, thank you. And that vision is coming to fruition. Yeah, thank you much. You're, wel you. you're welcome. I appreciate you a lot. Well, thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. 
and we can look forward to many exciting things happening with Sacred Wind Communications. So remember they're located on East Santa Fe Avenue. Do you have the address? I don't have the address mm, right no, off. I don't, I don't either. <laughs> but um, you can go online, get their number in Yatahe or their number in Albuquerque, and uh, just check them out. They, have, As I said, they have provided us with superb service. We have absolutely uh, appreciated the quality of service that we receive from Sacred Wind Communications. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you, John, thank you, for Barbara. joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. El Cafecito has been serving authentic New Mexican cuisine for over 32 years. The first thing that greets you is the fragrant aroma of chili. The friendly and efficient staff welcome you to a dining experience that can only be found in Grants. Try the award-winning burrito, red, green, or maybe you want Christmas. Do you need a chili fix? You will not be disappointed. There's so many great choices. What sets El Cafecito apart is the made fresh chili every day. Oh, I come here for the breakfast burrito, which is very good. Service is good, fast. When you're hungry, you're ready to eat. A banquet room is designed for meetings, special occasions, and community events. For those in a hurry, the drive-up window offers convenience, too. The service, friendly staff, great New Mexican cuisine is all due to Angela and Larry Baca. They oversee every aspect of El Cafecito. Welcome to this segment of Cibola Treasures. In our studio today is someone new to our community. However, I believe she's been in our area for a few years, and I'd like to introduce to you Kimberly Simpson. So Kimberly, what is your position in our community? Uh, we, I have just been hired as the new city treasurer for the city of Grants. Okay. And I started full-time January 29th. So, so I just completed a month, basically. Okay. Brand new. <laughs> Brand new. Brand new. Super. So um, as treasurer, what are the responsibilities of the treasurer of the city of Grants? Um, my main responsibility is the financial reporting that uh, needs to be done on a quarterly basis to the Department of Finance, the New Mexico Department of Finance, uh, as well as I'm implementing plans, not implementing plans, I am implementing where I report to the council on a monthly basis from the previous month, uh, where our financial standing is with the city. Um, I'm in charge of the investments that we have. Uh, I'm in charge of the bank accounts, making sure we have enough money in our account to pay our bills. Uh, also in charge of recording the revenue. Uh, can't really go out and find the revenue, but record it where it needs to be recorded. Uh, the number one source of, of income for the city of Grants is our gross receipts tax. And I was very, very surprised um, when I started the amount of gross receipts. We're about a half a million dollars a month is what our gross receipts are for the city of Grants. And that is an amazing number for the size of this community and for as small as we are. Um, but that is our main source of revenue. And okay. so, you know, when we encourage people to shop local, uh, it's not only shopping the local businesses, but it's also even the Walmarts and the gas stations because those gross receipts money are what pay our bills here and allow us to have the community that we have. Okay. I, so. I, I think that perhaps the community is not aware of how important that is. We see so many people going to Albuquerque to shop or going to Gallup to shop or going out of, even out of state. Even out of state, right. <clears throat> and right. so that means that we don't have the money to, and of course the big thing always is our roads, our roads, our streets right. and so forth. Right. Well, we don't have the money if they're not spending their money here, we're not going to have the money to right. get that done. Right, right. We we get a small percentage of, of property taxes, but um, you know the county gets gets a larger percentage of property taxes. And the thing about property taxes is that just affects the, the only people who contribute to that are, are homeowners and business owners, whereas the gross receipts taxes everybody. It doesn't matter whether you rent or whether you are an owner, a, a, you know, a homeowner, everybody contributes. Everybody goes to Walmart, everybody goes to Smith's, everybody goes to, you know, the independent businesses that are here. And it's really, really important to spend our money here so that we get that gross receipts tax. 
Well, I think that one of the things, I, I have friends that live at Marema, um, and they shop. They come all the way, rather than going to Gallup, to the Walmart there, they come here to shop. Right. Um, a couple of years ago, we were in um, in Arizona at, I'm trying to think of where we were. It was a, um, a tourist area, and there were some Navajo uh, artists that were happened mm -hmm. to be there. Mm -hmm. And they come all the way from Arizona to shop at our Walmart here. Oh, wow. Oh, so, wow. So, and then if you go through the parking lot, You'll see cars from all, all over, over the, the country. Place, right. So that's bringing gross right. receipts here too. Right. And people would rather it's easy to get off the interstate. Try going to the one in Gallup. Oh, it's a, it's a nightmare. No matter what time of the day you go there, I do not like that Walmart. <laughs> or what time of the month? Or what time of the month? It does not matter. So. Right. Yeah, and I, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about Walmart, and it sounds like we're plugging them, and I don't mean to, but I know that there was a lot of controversy over the semis parking there. Well, the parking lot is big enough for the semis to be parking there, and the reality of it is, is that if they're parking there or at the truck stop, either one, it doesn't matter. They're spending money here, so that's fine. Go ahead, let them park there and let them spend money because guess what? We get we get what they spend. We get the part sure. of that money that they well, spend. Well, that was not the problem. It was the trash that they dumped out. Well, and that's a whole and other so, issue then. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, they were they were just dumping all their trash in the parking lot, oh, and I think okay. now I that they realize that, and now that they realize it's a privilege to be there. Right. You don't see the trash dumping. That no, it really isn't too bad down there, I don't think. I, we were just there on Sunday, and I really don't think it is. So right. That's but good that to was, know. That was the issue, I, as I recall. Gotcha. But um, there are some things that you are implementing. So I know that there are challenges always with a comptroller or with the treasurer. Right. There are always issues that you have to uh, deal with. And so what are some of the challenges that you face as a treasurer? Well, I think I think the probably the, the biggest challenge. I have a lot of experience in the business world, but I don't have much in municipalities. And so I've had this learning curve of, of understanding where our revenues come from <clears throat> and then the the way the way our finances work with the loans that we get from the state of New Mexico to help do some of our projects like our new wastewater treatment plant, uh, some of the projects that we've done on First Street and on Second Street, such as that. So that's been my personal biggest challenge. But but aside from that, um, our biggest challenge that I have that we have in this in the city right now is our our accounting system is antiquated. It's over 20 years old. It is um, a very old school train of thought. I think it was probably great at the time. In fact, I know it was, but we, our technology, you know, as we all know, you buy a phone today and tomorrow it's already obsolete. Well, take that times 20 years and you, I mean, our system's probably 400 years old in, in terms of technology. Right. Um, and so there's just so many other things that we can be doing within our accounting system that will make, right now, everybody says, we'll pull a financial report. Well, the steps and the hoops we have to go through to pull one single report it is just ludicrous. It is so time consuming that it is it is just impossible. Our purchase order system is, we have a really good system that goes through our computer system, or that goes through the computer, not through our computer system. But then after it runs through the system, after the approvals take place, and we have a very good system of, of the department head has to approve it. If they're over a certain amount, they've got to get bids. And then it comes back to our purchasing person and then they create the, the purchase order. But then after all of that process is done, then it has to be manually entered into our accounting system. Well, you have time, number one. You have the possibility for errors because you're manually entering things. So really, really not a good thing. And I could just go on and on. So many of our systems are like that where we have to manually enter things or we have to, in it doesn't interface well. So we are in the process and actually the city made this decision prior to me coming on board to go to a new accounting system. And it's called Tyler. It's been very well received. They've been in business for a lot of years. And actually there's several communities in the state of New Mexico who use them already. And so we're going to be getting their input. So we started our first, we started the first meeting. In fact, when I was just part time, I worked a couple weeks part time. We had our first uh, meeting, planning meeting, I guess you would say. Basically, we are going to start moving account. Uh, we're going to start combining accounts and, and organizing that in mid April. Uh, we are going to start configuring things in July. And then we will do uh, some parallel uh, payrolls in September 1, not 
parallel, uh, not two, but just one. And we will go live October 1st. So um, that's six months away. Um, in the middle of that, because our fiscal year ends June 30th, we will have to do the fiscal year eight, uh, 19 budget before then. Uh, so there's a lot of time that's going to be involved in the next several months focusing on getting the new system up and running, but getting our budget finished, getting everything completed, because we're going to have to run on the old system for three months before we start the new system, because our fiscal year starts July 1st. Right. So uh, our department has a lot of work cut out for us. We have a lot of work, but once we get to that point... I think it's really going to be a great thing, and I think we're going to be able to produce reports and, and be on top of things in a better way because it because the technology is going to allow us to. Good. Well, one of the things that has, and I know that Laura may have mentioned it to you on more than one occasion, because I have been asking for a financial report right. at the city right. council meeting so that the public knows where we are with our uh, income and our expenses and it and that's something that you're going to be doing so right. once a month there'll be a report there'll be a report and and i have a quarterly report that i have to give to the department of finance for the state of new mexico and it's a little bit more detailed i mean it's it's 30 plus pages long i don't think anybody wants to see that at the council meeting sure. but we can take those numbers and we can make a, a smaller report that would give us that and i'm i'm actually hoping to start that prior to the new accounting system happening i'm hoping to start that in april so when i finish my quarterly report for the first for the well actually it's the third quarter because the fiscal year is different but right. it's the it's january february and march basically so that will be due the end of april so when i present that to the council the month of april i'm hoping to have a one page synopsis of exactly that a traditional because I mean it's a municipality they don't well I haven't observed that our accounting system really has a traditional income statement where you have revenue minus expenses equals your bottom line they don't really have a report that does that or at least that I've figured out yet um, and so I'm trying to just create a simple one in Excel that will basically just show that just give folks an idea of I had no idea what the revenues were for the city I, I and I'm you know and I'm fairly nosy and stuff but I, I never really processed it and I don't think a lot of folks do I think people just you know everything's going along just fine and and so we want to make sure that that information is available to people so I'm hoping April good. um that's that's my plan good good well um and you have a staff of how many in your department? I have four. There are four ladies in the finance department. And I, I just have to say, um, the other challenge the finance department has uh, has entered into is, is a, a turnover in, in my position, actually. And uh, it's just how it's happened, uh, for whatever reasons. And so the four ladies that are in there, though, have kept things going uh, without a leader. Um, and with and with change, I guess not so much without a leader, but with change, and so they have done an excellent job and uh, are to be commended for for getting payroll out on time, for paying our bills. You know, we're not known as not paying our bills, and that's a good thing. So, right. uh, four great ladies, and and we we've got some great ideas and some great things going forward. Wonderful. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back because we uh, need to continue this conversation. So don't go away. We're going to continue with Kimberly Simpson in just a moment, so stay tuned. Welcome back. We have Kimberly Simpson in our studio today, and she is the new treasurer for the City of Grants. And um, we just left off talking about your staff. You know, many of us come to work to get a paycheck, right? Right. But there are also some things that people, re it really helps their motivation and their attitude when they are recognized for the good job that they've done. And that's something that you have wanted to do as well. Yeah, I, I, am, uh, I, I ask questions, first of all. I ask questions, endless questions. I'm sure to the, some people just are tired of listening to, my, ask, listening to my questions, but I do. I ask questions, and I also think that feedback is very important. I think the, the lessons we learned as children, please and thank you, are so important. And... Um, I think they need to be used more and that's what I try to do with my staff I do appreciate what they're doing um, and we're trying to we have we've started having a we'll have a department meeting every month and go over things they can tell me things I tell them the, the issues that I want dealt with um, and I want them to be the same way I am is there a better way of doing something and a better doesn't have to mean money necessarily it has to mean more efficient is it easier on them? Does it allow them to free up their time so that they can take on another responsibility? 
We're in the process of re restructuring the finance department just a little bit, um, shifting some duties. We're doing some cross training so that when there are personnel changes, it's not this major crisis because one person knew everything. Right. Everybody knows everything equally and is going to be responsible for everything at some point so that, so that we can all to cover for one another. I mean, life happens. Whether that's right. you know whether it's whether it's somebody quits for personal reasons or gets fired. I mean, that that's the negative. What I'm talking about, you know, it, we have our payroll clerk lives in Saboita, and so or Ciboyeta. I always say that wrong. Um, you know, if it snow, if we'd had a regular winter this year and it snowed, she may not get to work, and we may have to do payroll. Somebody else has to know how to do that. Sure. So. And I'm hoping that that will help them to get excited about learning new things, um, taking on more responsibilities as well. And then that makes all, yes, we all go to work for our paycheck, but you got to love going to work, number one. So you have to have a good group of folks you work with, which I think we really do. But you also have to enjoy your job and you don't want it to be boring. You don't want it to be monotonous. It needs to be exciting and different, and I think learning new things is how you accomplish that. Sure, absolutely. And so that's that's my thing, and I'm constantly telling them better ways of doing things, more efficient ways of doing things, easier way of doing things. Right. Especially using our our poor old accounting system. I sure. mean, it just you know it does really well for what for what it's doing, but it it's time to make a change. Make a change, yes, ma'am. Right. It right. really is. Okay. Well, um, I was um, thinking about your history a little bit. And so Reserve is such a beautiful, beautiful place. I recall there was a hotel there. The Road Inn. And I kept thinking, I will get over there and spend the night, and I have yet to do that. Wait, it's, it burned down. <laughs> oh, I'm so, so Yeah, okay. so my husband and I grew up in Reserve. My dad was a school teacher, and okay. we lived there. We graduated in 84, and uh, he stayed there and did some logging, and then when the logging ended, he went and he became a mechanic. I went away to college, and then we connected back up a few years later and uh, got married, and we have three boys. And yeah, the road in burned down. Um, it's been quite some time. It's been quite a while. They rebuilt it, um, just kind of like 300 yards another direction, um, but um, it burned down. <laughs> So, um, and I don't know if the, I shouldn't say this, I, I don't know if the first time it burned down, if it was maybe just raised, if they, because it was so old. Oh, okay. But the second time it burned down, it, it was an accident. I mean, it, you know, it just happened. Okay. So. Now, isn't there a bed and breakfast there? Or was there? Mm -hmm. There was you a know, realtor. There was a realtor that had this beautiful uh, property. Uh, probably the Keeney place down in the lower Frisco. It's like a home. It was like a home. Mm -hmm. Yes, a big white home. Yeah, yeah. that would be Emil Keeney's place. And okay. as far as I know, that's that's still a bread and breakfast. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I my parents don't live there anymore. They live there anymore. They live in uh, Arizona. And actually, they have a summer property in Luna, which is just over the hill from sure. New Mexico. I mean, from Reserve. And uh, my husband and I actually have property there as well that we is our summer escape. Sure. Um, and so my parents spend half the year in Arizona and then half the year up here. And so um, we just pretty much go to Luna and stay secluded. It's a tiny, tiny it's like a blue water sized town. It's right. really tiny, except right. there's not even a Dairy Queen there. <laughs> well, I remember uh, my son was involved in scouting and I, I have often said, that I needed to be one of those adventurers of the 16th century or 17th or eighth, you know, where I could explore because that's right. what I love to do is yeah. get out and travel and explore and yeah. find new things. Yeah. And so I've been through Luna, uh, Cliff, mm -hmm. and um, so all of those communities that you're very, very familiar right. with, right. Right? right? I've had an opportunity to drive through. And so let's talk a little bit more about your educational experience. So you went to? I went to UNLV, which is the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Okay. That was quite a change. We moved there the year I graduated from high school. So here I'd been a country girl in a really tiny town my whole life. And uh, we, my dad uh, decided to stop teaching and got into uh, the satellite business when the big, like the Comcast sat, sat big dishes that you see, that's mm -hmm. what he did. That's what took us to Las Vegas. So I went to school there and I got my bachelor's degree in finance and I worked uh, various industries. I worked in the healthcare industry. I, wor I worked in the finance industry for several years. I worked for Norwest Financial, which doesn't even exist anymore. Right. They got consumed by Wells Fargo. Um, and so I did that for several years. And then when my husband and I connected back up again after several years, 
and got married, um, I when we had our second boy, our, our, our oldest boy is 24. He'll be 25 next month. And when our second boy was born, we decided we wanted me to stay home. And I was very, very, very fortunate to have been able to do that. And um, I taught, uh, taught actually at a business college in Las Cruces. We lived there for about seven years. And um, I taught at a business college for three years, part-time uh, accounting and business and math classes. And thoroughly loved that. Probably would have been a teacher, um, but the business world called me. And then we started our own business. And when we lived in Arizona, and uh, I ran that for the last 10 years, which is how I've stayed in the business world, uh, you know, doing safety meetings and going to trainings and things like that, as well as just everything that it takes to run a business. Uh, much smaller scale than, uh, than the city of Grants, but still able to keep me up to date with everything. Good. And so our youngest boy, our middle boy, is going to Las Cruces. He's an engineer. He's a junior this year. Wonderful. And he's trying to be an engineer, I should say. He's, he's a junior in college. And then our youngest is a sophomore at the high school. And so, um, so yeah, he started driving last spring, and I thought, I think I'm ready to start working outside the home again. So this position came available, and I jumped on it, and here we are. Wonderful. So Okay. Well, we're glad to have you here with us today. And in closing, what would you like to tell our audience regarding, oh, I, there was a, it was our, um, what is that report that goes to the state every year that didn't get in on time? The audit. The audit. <laughs> the how, audit. Are, how are we doing with that this year? Um, actually, I, yeah, I would like to address that. And, and it, you know, the problem is, is that my predecessor uh, and, uh, left in, uh, in November, the first week in November, which was right when the audit had just gotten started. And the, basically my position was vacant for several weeks. And then I started part time in December, but I hate to even mention that because I was there two days a week and, you know, it was all brand new and it was the holidays. And so um, all I could do was work two days a week. And, and so basically that's the position of my job. I need to get that audit in on time. And there, that, nobody was in that position. And the staff did as well as they could to get the information that the auditors needed, but they were not able to. They, um, th it just didn't happen because there was because of the personnel turnover, and so it was due. I started full time January 29th, and the deadline was February 15th. Well, two weeks is, was not enough time. So, at we actually got put on uh, an at risk community, which sounds terrible, but it is not. All it means is that I have to send them a written report every quarter until we get all the audit information to the auditors. Right now, I'm trying to get the our long-term debt schedules finished up, and it sounds like that'd be real easy to say, we owe this much money, and this is how much we paid, and this is how much is left. Unfortunately, because of our antiquated accounting system, you have to go through several funds over here and several funds over there to get the money transferred, and it's very, difficult for me to trace that and my predecessor uh, was not able to do it and I am trying to figure out I'm basically I'm a detective is what I tell my girls I'm a detective trying to trace where these accounts were and where this money was so I almost have that completed and then the auditors need our bank reconciliations and um, they weren't they hadn't been done for for a while and so I'm trying to work on those and get those completed as well. And so basically with this at risk, I have to produce a report. The first one will be due March 15th. And it's just a written report that says what I'm working on to get to where we can get the audit completed. Once we get finished, get all the, get finished getting all the information to the auditors, they have, a, they'll take about a month is my understanding to finish our audit and then get the findings back to us. So my goal to, for myself, to the city council and to Laura, the city manager, who's my boss, when I started was I would have everything cleaned up by uh, April the 1st because not only because that needs to happen so we can get the audit completed, but so that we can start working on our budget in April and so that we can start creating our new chart of accounts that we need to go to our new accounting system that we have to have to them sometime the beginning of May. So it's not, this isn't, an, um, this isn't a date I picked out of nowhere. It, there's reasons behind it and that's what our goal is. So okay. my feeling is I'm gonna do one report March 15th by the June 15th report, I won't have to do it because I'll already have it finished. Wonderful. We'll have the audit completed. Hopefully we'll have the findings back sometime in May 
and we will be good to go. Wonderful. So okay. sorry, I'm a little long winded sometimes. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very passionate. Well, and I think, so I think that our community, our audience, needs to know how complex the job is, and that what you're doing is to uh, solve some of the problems that have occurred. Right. Um, and and doing that so that we can be on track for the next audit right. on time. We will, we will. And I, I'm a person who I don't like waiting until the last minute. And so that, that I mean, we've already started implementing various changes with, with reports, various reports that are due, payroll reports, our, our federal taxes, things like that. So we're, we're already working towards that. So yeah, by next year's audit, we will be on time. Wonderful. And it will be 100% correct and on time. Wonderful, okay. Well, welcome Great. aboard. Thank you. And if you happen to see Kimberly Simpson around, welcome her to Grant. So she's got a tremendous job that she's uh, working on and is uh, going to serve our community, not only with enthusiasm, but efficiency and expertise. Thank you for tuning in to this segment of Siebel Treasures, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Fast, reliable internet is here, and it's local. Hi, I'm Mike Gonzalez, IT Director for the Village of Milan. And I'm Robert Ramirez, the Computer Lab Moderator. We have fiber optic service through Sacred Wind, and it has allowed us to create our computer lab. Hi, I'm Amanda Valdez, and I am a teacher. Thinking of pursuing my master's degree, I knew that it couldn't have been possible before. Sacred Wind Internet made it possible to obtain my degree online. Connect 66 Internet, fast, reliable, and local. Powered by Sacred Wind, a name you know, a product you trust. This is Darcy, and he's a, a shepherd mix. He's a, about six months old, and he hasn't been neutered yet. So, but he's really gentle. Uh, he he uh, is willing to be on a leash, and and walks real well with someone on a leash. So he's a well-behaved six-month-old shepherd mix. So come on down and get Darcy. He needs a home. This is Chip, and Chip is a, a male, just a real happy, happy pup. That tail just wags and wags and wags. This dog needs a home. He really does. Um, but look how gentle he is and how pretty he is. Just a real beautiful pup. So this Chip needs a home, a home for Chip. OK, look over here, look. Over here at the camera. There you go. There you go. The camera needs to see you. Pretty, pretty eyes, too. But very gentle. Um, seems to like people and is good on the dogs. And, and seems to get along really well on a leash. Uh, this is Goldie, and she looks like a, a mix again. And uh, just really gentle. She's about three years old has never been spayed, so she'll need to be neutered, I mean altered. But uh, this pup needs a home, and you can see how gentle she is, how friendly she is. That, that, um, that tail doesn't ever seem to stop. And she's a licker, she likes to lick you. So she's friendly, she l needs attention, and apparently a well-behaved, well-behaved dog. So. Goldie needs a home, so come in out to the shelter and adopt Goldie. Well, this is Sadie, and she's still a pup. She hasn't been um, spayed, so she'll need to be neutered. But look at that tag, that tail just a wagging. She wants to be adopted. She also is easy on a leash. She really uh, follows on a leash real well, but this pup needs a home. This pup needs a home badly. But she's well behaved and she's friendly. <laughs> As you can see, she wants to go home with me too, but she can't. I've already got one. Already got one. I can't take you with me. So, but come on out to the shelter. Let's make homes for these puppies and dogs and kitties. We're out at the animal care center and every month we have so many dogs that are being picked up that they're having to take them to a no-kill shelter in Utah. For the month of December there were 89 dogs that were transported to Utah. 
So these dogs need homes. Some of them are so well behaved, you can even tell that some of them have been cared for and they've either lost their owners or the owners don't know that they've run away. But come on out to the Animal Care Center on uh, Sacalaris and see if you can't find a puppy or a kitty that you can make a good home for. Welcome to this episode of Que Pasa? Letting you guys know what's happening in our community. And today we have a very important uh, guest. Uh, her name is Dawn Chapman. Dawn, welcome to Que Pasa. Thank you. And uh, I really don't know much about the rocks because I know I have rocks in my head. <laughs> but can you explain to us how this has happened from the very beginning? How, how did it come out? Um, last summer, my husband and I went to visit our daughter in Colorado Springs. And we walk in the house, walk into her dining room, and it's literally covered with rocks and paint. And I'm like, what in the world are you doing? She's like, oh, mom, oh, mom, it's the greatest thing. You get your rocks, you paint them, you hide them, people find them, they rehide them, and all that. And so she gets on her phone, she looks up, and she says, there's not a rock group in Grants. She says, you need to go home and do this. I'm like, great, here's another project. You know, Craig's going to kill me. So. And, and where were you guys at when this started? In Colorado in Springs. In Colorado Springs. Yeah, and it's all over the country. It's just... it, is her husband okay, though? Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of rocks there. Now, he, he just lets it go, like okay. Craig. Okay. Just, let, just it go, let it go. You know? <laughs> let it go. Do your thing, huh? Exactly. <laughs> so how did all this get started? In what part of the world or country or what? There was a woman in uh, Cape Cod who's the founder of the Kindness Rocks project Kindness that rocks. started the whole thing. And then from there, it just branched out, and the rocks started traveling. Our rocks have traveled. And everybody else just started doing their groups and their communities and towns and stuff like that. So that's basically what I did. I just came back. My daughters came to visit. We did about 40 rocks mm -hmm. and then took them out and put them everywhere. I started a site on Facebook called Grants Rocks. This is what our cover page photo looks like if you want to go on to there and join the club okay i'm kind of lost at this people are coming in our, to our community you're going to a different community you leave rocks there now are people entitled to pick those rocks up and leave their own rocks there on the back uh -huh. put little you can write it on there or whatever i believe this one's written on there too but uh keep a rehide post a picture on facebook to grants rocks so they have the option of keeping it a lot of them just it speaks to them and they want to keep it it's their first rock whatever the reason so they'll keep it they can go out and rehide it so somebody else can find it so it's like a continual easter egg hunt <laughs> okay thing. so okay i'll pick up a rock and i'm going to texas mm -hmm. um i write something in the back of the rock you put Grant's Rocks, then you take it to Texas, okay. you leave it, there. leave it there, hopefully whoever finds it will get on and say, post the picture and say, look what I just found in Corpus Christi. Oh, wow. And this rock just came from Grant's, New Mexico. So, I mean, it's getting word out about our community, and they're like, where's Grant's, New Mexico, you know, so. Is this like a therapy? It is therapeutic to a lot of our members. We oh, have a lot of members that have health issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a couple of insomniacs that stay up late at night and paint rocks. Um, we've had a couple people that are like ADHD, um, autistic. It, it helps them in different ways. One lady said, you know, she's an introvert, and this has helped her come out of her shell. So this is a very nice rock. Mm -hmm. And this is... This is just his initials. Uh -huh. This was given to me by one of the gentlemen at the senior center. We had a rock painting party there last month, and he wanted to put this in our rock garden. So I have to seal it yet with a clear coat so okay. the paint won't wear off. And then I'll put the little sticker on the back on the so back. everybody has the option, and then I'll take it to our rock garden. Wow. And plant it. That is nice. So That is very, very nice. And then this one here... I found just recently, well, around the holidays, because you can see it's Jesus and Mary mm -hmm. and Joseph, but uh, I found this at the Cibola Family Health Center and stuff, so it, they're everywhere, and when you find the first one, you're hooked. It's like, <laughs> what is this all about? So this one my daughter made for me and sent back from Colorado, and this one I made for Barbara here at the Seven Cities Production Studio. 
So, and it can be anything. You don't have to be artistic. Okay. You can just write on them. I shake too much. I can't paint worth mm -hmm. a darn. So I decoupage things on there. This one's decoupaged. I just printed it Print off it and decoupaged it on there and gemmed it up. And So you're telling me you've gone to our local senior citizens and mm -hmm. brought this up? Mm -hmm. And what kind of response did you get out of it? Initially, there were about 20 ladies in the first class. Yeah, they were all, they were all ladies that time. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know how to draw. I, don't, I can't paint. I can't, I can't, I can't. And I'm like... <laughs> Yes, you can. Just sit down there. Just whatever comes to mind. Well, the tables were covered with newspaper, and this one lady in particular, it was right around the Trek for Trash mm -hmm. um, that they have. And there's the little trash can marching along and all that. So that was her inspiration. That was, that was hers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go on Pinterest. I mean, it, it just depends. And once they got started, they were hooked. I mean, some of them made two or three rocks in a little over an hour's time and stuff. So... They asked to have it again, so we've had two that we've had two, there. two paintings. Rock part, painting parties. Rock painting parties. Mm -hmm. And you have a great turnout. Yes, yes. And the last one, like I said, we had a gentleman at that one, so right. he, he did this rock for us. We've wow. had scavenger hunts where I posted clues to different places around town, the ROTC billboard to where they actually had to go up and count. Um, I said like the third person over in the second row. So I mean they actually had to instead of driving by it and not paying attention mm -hmm. They had to get out and do that and actually mm -hmm. oh, That's good physical therapy. There. They're getting <laughs> exercise. It's getting these kids out of the house and away from their electronic playmates oh. You know their family time. I think that's the biggest feedback I get is that it's brought their families closer together You know and that's what we're lacking. Mm-hmm Mm -hmm. No family communication. Everybody goes into their bedroom mm -hmm. to play their computers. And, and the parents will ask kids, what aspect do you like, you know, about this? Do you like hiding or painting or hunting them? And they're like, we like it all. You awesome. know, it's just, it's a good family project. And obviously there's a lot of interest because, oopsie, let's take the other one off and not worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is life. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's another gem to add to the pile. <laughs> anyway, we have, as of this morning, 1,544 members since August 2nd since when August. I started. Mm -hmm. So There's a big interest in the community. Big interest in stuff. So, so I know you uh, also were, uh, were the one that wanted the rock garden over by the arch, mm -hmm. Richie Hicks, and that's, that made it look so nice. So Thank you. very nice. Thank you. We really welcome that. It's uh, another attraction. For the, for the community there. Exactly. And, you know, we've had a little bit of issues and stuff. We planted the rocks at the dedication, and I went back in a few days, and a lot of the rocks were gone. So mm -hmm. I know we didn't have that many tourists. So <laughs> <laughs> they're strictly for the tourists, mm -hmm. people traveling, coming in there to get their picture taken under the sign and to take back with them. And hopefully, in fact, I read a post yesterday, and this young lady, her family was visiting over the holidays, some from Utah, Colorado. There were four different states she mentioned, and she took them to the rock garden, told them all about everything. They each picked a rock, and they're taking them back to their hometowns and want to start a project like Themselves. this in their hometown. Mm -hmm. That's getting the community involved, mm -hmm. and, and you talk about selling grants. That's one way of selling grants. It does. And it gets our community out. They have learned so much. Some of the places they hide these, they'll give little hints and stuff. And it's like, where is that? You know, sculptures and mm -hmm. different things. So we are learning constantly about the community. Right. And, uh, you know, now they say, well, where's grants? Now they can now they Google can. it or whatever exactly. they do. Exactly. And they do. I, I still have to look at pictures. <laughs> where so. am I? <laughs> <laughs> where am I? Oh, where's my map? So... But, you know, it's very easy for us or somebody that's walking around town or just say, hey, you know, that's beautiful. I'll just take this with me. Actually, you are because that's for your wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's a smile. Yes, that is for you to take to your wife. <laughs> oh, you know, it's a great throwing stone. <laughs> oh, skipping. <laughs> See, you knew what I was. Thank you, Don. I didn't know that. I just grabbed it to make an example of that what people do. That worked out perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I, I had a, I started looking at all, everything that you were doing because I was interested. And I, I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So I started looking into it, and then I had my daughters, uh, get their smartphones. <laughs> 
<laughs> and show, show me how it was working. And I said, what an idea. I said, that's a positive idea for our community. It is. And for everybody who lives here in town and in the county. Mm -hmm. Now, all these people that didn't know where Grants, New Mexico was, and that we're on Route 66, the longest stretch in New Mexico. There you and go. I'm, and I love Route 66. So, you know, and now with a, with a rock garden in there, that gives us more. Right. Puts us on the map. It puts so. us better on the map with more people out there. Another thing that's kind of interesting, one of the ladies posted last week, um, we generally do hints, or they do hints. You don't have to. I prefer to hide mine and just let them find them randomly. Okay. But a lot of the members like to do hints, and then they are like on a scavenger hunt. They head out. They're looking for these things. But this lady in particular, instead of putting a hint, she put the... GPS coordinates, similar to geocaching. Geocaching. Mm -hmm. So, Main come, Street. come time this summer when that starts up, mm -hmm. I'm going to put the bug in our members' ears awesome. to get out there and hide these rocks at these coordinates. You know, so. uh, Chris, they're the new director of Main Street and Josephine. Their whole board they have now are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. I think they would jump on this and I'll Oh, yeah. That. They're all almost hand in hand. Hand in hand, mm -hmm. yes. And it mm -hmm. all it goes the same. This is going to be great. So... What else are you going to be going and doing? Oh, um, it, probably more scavenger hunts. I've had some, a lot of people request scavenger to do hunt? that again. Uh -huh. Well, see, there you, there you go. They bring people out. Mm -hmm. Get some out and about. Get some fresh air. It, exercise, you know? fresh air. Just, you know, just doing that communal being together thing, right. you know, and stuff. So. We're a small community. We all need to work together. And we need to advertise our town and promote it. Uh, mm -hmm. especially our leaders, you know, Seven Cities being one of the um, biggest promoters there is for grants. Yep. So at this point, um, you know, I just want you to keep going, doing what you're doing. and <laughs> Rallying um, the members. Rallying the members and, <laughs> and beating the rocks. There you go. You know? <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you for being here for the episode of Que Pasa. Yeah, so more than welcome. now we thank know what, what's happening here and Que Pasa. And thank you very much for being here. El Cafecito has been serving authentic New Mexican cuisine for over 32 years. The first thing that greets you is the fragrant aroma of chili. The friendly and efficient staff welcome you to a dining experience that can only be found in Grants. Try the award-winning burrito, red, green, or maybe you want Christmas. Do you need a chili fix? You will not be disappointed. There's so many great choices. What sets El Cafecito apart is the made fresh chili every day. Oh, I come here for the breakfast burrito, which is very good. Service is good, fast. When you're hungry, you're ready to eat. A banquet room is designed for meetings, special occasions, and community events. For those in a hurry, the drive-up window offers convenience, too. The service, friendly staff, great New Mexican cuisine is all due to Angela and Larry Baca. They oversee every aspect of El Cafecito. Well, it's election time, and it's tomorrow is our election. Um, of course, by the time you see this, it will be over. And someone said, we deserve what we get, what we vote for, or what we don't vote for. So keep in mind, uh, maybe for the next election that's coming up uh, later this year, the primary and the general election, just keep in mind that there's some serious things going on, not only in our city, our county, our state, and our nation. I want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of Siebel of Treasures.